This is our yacht design created by Alan Perrin, Dylan Greenfield, Isaiah Bird, and Grayson Wright. We are in EGR 305, Section 1, and our design is based off of a concept yacht that is 354 foot long. For team dynamics, the first thing we did was divide up the parts. Uh, we divided them a little bit differently than in the proposal. We divided them into four sections instead of three. Uh, once we divided the parts, we basically did individual work and didn't really set any, any meeting times. Uh, towards the end of the semester, we met for the full assembly and then we combined our report sections together, reviewed everything, and then once everything was reviewed and we were happy with the results, we went ahead and compiled the total assembly and then submitted the project. For the project overview, our main assembly was split up into four sub-assemblies. Alan Perone did the main body, which includes the hull and the other features on the hull. Dylan Greenfield did the, the highest point of the yacht, which includes the bridge and the helipad port. I did the main yacht deck and the mid deck, which includes the chairs, tables, and all the other things that would be placed on the deck. And Grayson Wright did the V12 engine, which powers the yacht, and we have four of these in our main assembly. Tackling the hull was a challenging task with only the overall dimension. My top priority was to make everything above the waterline match the pictures found online. Everything under the waterline was a basic hull shape that I found on yachts of similar uh, scale to this one. Although the underwater portion was not my top priority, I did spend a significant amount of time creating that bottom portion. The hull was created in one part using mostly generative shape design and wireframe. Uh, the hull consisted of over 100 spatial points and lines, 25 pads, and almost 20 pockets. With more experience in GSD, I believe I could have greatly simplified this piece, and it would have ended up with a cleaner result. Um, with only that one dimension, it was my task to scale the rest of the boat to match the pictures and provide the team with dimensions that were decided. The hull provided many difficulties in the GSD workbench. I could not get a thickness on the exterior surfaces due to the complex shape that I used. Therefore, I resulted in creating surfaces and using a closed surface command rather than thickness and turned those surfaces into parts and then hid the geometry. Trying to get the bow to come to a point while still flowing with the rest of the hull was a whole nother challenge I had to overcome and it provided several errors in those specific point locations. Once the hull was satisfactory, my next task was to add the details to the ship. The white stairs you can see in the image uh, led from the back floor of the boat up to the center room. Um, that part was rather easy and quick to complete. After I copied some sketches from the hull, the floor was complete and I started completing that center room, starting with the wood walls and then onto the more detailed pieces such as the hanging lamps, light fixtures, stage, and the door and doorway. Since we had limited time for this project, the team decided to neglect making the state rooms in the front, so once the windows were in place, we were able to neglect that section. To complete the rest of my parts, I needed to finish the flooring on the top deck and the pool area. I tried using a sticker to complete the pool water, but after rendering, it didn't look right. So I went back into part design and actually made the water as a part. I made it the size of the walls of the pool, and then I used the spline command to make the waves that you can kind of see in the rendered image. Um, doing one last check to make sure I completed everything, I ended up finding the anchor and hook and rope section of the boat. It was only in one image and I decided to go ahead and create that because they were pretty simple parts to make. Um, this project was challenging but it was extremely satisfying to complete. I believe the end result matches the pictures very accurately and the overall assembly is something that I can continue to work on and improve as the days go on. Three tier is a subassembly that sits on top of the main deck of the boat. It consists of three different sub-assemblies, including the bridge, which is where the captain controls the boat, the bottom floor and helicopter pad, and also the very top floor. A lot of these parts were created using part design, as some of the parts were not difficult enough to use any other workbenches. However, I did take advantage of using kinematics, as we did not notice the fact that there were no clear access points to the top floor. I did this by using a tongue and groove approach, where I pocketed out three grooves in the wings and padded three tongues on each side of the top floor. 
It took me a while to figure out what constraints to use to get the floor to move up and down, but by using a planar joint and prismatic joint on the correct planes and lines, I was able to get the floor to be able to simulate and move up and down on the wings. This was probably the most satisfying part about this subassembly. One of the parts I used GSD on were the spiral staircase in which I used points, lines, and a helix to create it. Although I do believe there was a shorter way to go about making the spiral staircase, it was definitely exciting to see the end product. A lot of what I believe was important to this subassembly and the other subassemblies as far as that goes was the materials we used on the different parts of the boat that looked the best. There was a problem with getting the glass windows clear enough to be able to see through, but by messing around with the properties enough, I found the most transparent glass to put on the boat to make it clear enough to see inside of the rooms. Overall, the subassembly went well and fit and looked good on top of the main deck of the boat. The lower and mid deck, including the front bar, rear bar, pool frame, stairs, and wooden awning are all made of one part. The other accessories on the deck include the chairs, mid deck circular tables, mid deck pillows, sofa, and glass panels. All of the features on the lower deck include the sloped beach with raised side, beach bar, towel room, main hallway, and circular bar at the front of the yacht. The features of the mid deck are the wooden awning, pool, and stairs to the lower deck. The water in the pool on the mid deck was created by padding a chunk of water and pocketing out a spline on the top surface for waves. All of my parts were created in part design and were made to be flush with the hull. Since we didn't have too many measurements, the hardest part of the deck was making sure everything was to scale for the human body. For example, the chairs had to be long enough and wide enough to fit an average person. The deck is textured with a wooden fence material to match the concept design. Alright, so the V12 engine subassembly. We had issues trying to find a full assembly of a proper yacht engine. Most yacht engines are around a V20 or a V32. Therefore, we took a V12 model and made it larger and just talked about the same design specs and scaled it to proper size for the yacht. So this V12, we modeled the crankcase and the oil pan out of glass so that you would actually be able to see inside the model. However, in real life, this would be made out of metal to be able to hold the energy in. The other materials used are steel for the uh, pistons, the crankshaft, the shaft itself, and then the propeller was made out of brass. The hardest piece to create by, create by far was the crankcase. It had multiple, multiple patterns, however the patterns didn't always fit together correctly. The pistons did not want to, the pistons did not want to fit into the cylinder heads correctly. It was by far the piece that gave me the most trouble. The most interesting piece, however, to create was the propeller. This was because we used generative shape design for the fins. This was where we used projection onto a splined surface to actually create a curve so that it would be able to grab the water and then push it backwards to actually propel the boat forward. So one of the other things that we used or the workbench that I used that was interesting was the kinematics workbench. I took all the pieces and turned the engine into a realistic engine other than the headers and the rockers up top. So when kinematics was played in the Katia software, you would be able to see the pistons moving, the crankshaft moving, and then eventually the propeller moving as well. Conclusion and evaluation. The end result was rewarding and satisfying to see. The end result of our yacht looked fairly close to the concept design that we modeled it after. We stayed ahead of our deadlines for our milestones, and overall our teamwork and communication was very helpful in working through the time crunch. If we had more time, we would have ensured that all the sub-assemblies used the same units.